So this might be one of the most nerdy videos I've done for a little while, but if this is your nightmare, then we're gonna fix it. Hi guys, I'm Ant and this is EdTech Music, where we look at how technology can help class teachers deliver curriculum music with more engagement and fun. Today we're looking at the hidden data or metadata within your music files and working out how we can use that to help us organise our tracks better and find what we need in the future. We're also going to be looking at a small program called MP3 Tag, which works on Windows and Mac and will help us do that on bulk more easily. Let's go. So what's this hidden information? Well, it's not really hidden, it's just for lots of people they don't need or know how to get at it. Let me go to View. I'm here in Windows, and this works very similarly on Mac. Um, and I'm going to Details View so that I've got these tabs lost across the top. Now what I'm going to do is just right click up in any of these spaces and see what else I can add. So let me add the track Title. You might see some of these already. I'm going to add the Album. I'm going to add the File Type and I'm going to add the size of the album. I've got other things like date created. I'm going to add the length and the genre. And you can see gradually I can choose which ones I want to see up here. Some of these I might want to grab and pull nearer the beginning. And I can also grab the boundaries between any of these columns and make them larger and smaller as I want to see more information. Now, as I look at this, I realize that there's lots of things that don't match, and that's frustrating me. So let's sort out this file information. Here, the name of the file is Shake Your Tail Feather, but when I double click on it, look what comes up as the title, Blues Brothers Ray Charles Karaoke Instrumental Backing Track. That's not very helpful to me. And then eventually Shake a Tail Feather. And what I want to do is get to the point that no matter what program I open my files in, I see the right names and the right information around them. That would be a good start. So how do I do that? Well, you can see if I second click on the file name itself, then it allows me to edit the file name there, which is the same as right clicking and in Windows choosing the rename option down there. It allows me to change the name of the file itself. What I want is that my file names and the actual titles of the tracks are the same. Also, let me right click in here and now I'm going to go right to the bottom and choose properties. And what happens then is that this dialog box appears that gives me further information. So it's telling me it's an MP3 file. It's telling me the file name. And again, I can change it in there and then OK if I want to. But I've also got this details tab at the top here. And in details, I can add further information. So I can give ratings to my tracks with stars if I want to. That might help me work out which are the better versions of my backing tracks and play along tracks. I can adjust a contributing artist. I can input the album artist, the album information, the year, give it an, a number so that it appears in, certain, in a chronological order and put in a genre there. I can see the length. I can see what the rate it was recorded at, if that's useful to me. And you can see as it goes down, this information that's called metadata or ID3 data, if we want to be totally correct, we can edit for the track. And that's one way that we can improve what we see here in these columns. If you get used to seeing this information with these columns about your tracks, then it's a really useful way to keep on top of what tracks you've used and why they're useful. Well, what we want to do is find a way to edit these a bit more on bulk. And the reason for that is that every time I maybe do a concert or a show or a production, something where I need those tracks, rather than just taking the one track where it is, I would make a copy of the track, possibly, and put it in a new location. And that lets me do things like this, where I rename them in numeric order for the production that they're being used for. But over time, the information around those tracks is going to get lost in different places. So let's look at how we can improve that quality. So in a browser, we're going to go to mp3tag.de, and that is the address for the free version of mp3tag. You can always donate if you feel like you're getting good value from it. And if you're on a Mac, you can go to mp3tag.app. Now, this version gives you a seven-day trial, and then there's a cost to purchasing it. But for lots of users, they say if they're on a Mac, it might be one of the few things they actually miss from Windows. So we're going to look at the Windows version, because that's what I'm running at the moment. And what I want to do is go to the download page, and then here's the link to download the file there. So I'm going to click on Open File, and then I just keep clicking Next, 
and eventually you can see it's installing it. The final option is through the Windows Store. You can see here you can search for MP3 tag, click on the app and then click install, although mine will say launch because I already have it, and this means you benefit from faster updates. OK, here's MP3 tag open, the Windows version. The Mac version is going to look pretty similar. Um, I have some options up here in the small icons menu, and here I have add directory. Now that's going to let me add a folder that I want it to keep an eye on and look after the contents for. But what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to go and grab all of these files and move them across into here. Right, now I've dragged them across, you can see they've all appeared here. Let's maximize this so we can see it better. And if I click on any of these tracks, the information about it is appearing in the sidebar. And when you see it in this view, you realize that there's lots of information missing for some of these tracks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hold down Shift and select the top and the bottom, which is the same as doing Control and A, or Command and A on a Mac. And then what I'm going to do is think about what information I want to be the same on all of them. Well, to start with, they're all backing tracks. So in this column called Artist, the way that I organise my tracks is that I separate them by their purpose. So actually what I really need is for all these to be called backing track. So I'm going to go to the Artist column up here, and rather than keeping the original, you can see that all of the different versions of things that are here are already available. I'm going to click Backing Tracks. Now, I can choose that from the list because some of them are already called Backing Track. I could just type Backing Tracks instead, and it would achieve the same thing. So now, when I hit Save, we can see that tag being applied. And in this column, all of those tracks have jumped to have that information as well. I'll just remove that and tidy these up by dragging them a little bit thinner at the moment so that we can see more of the possible columns. And you can see there's many of them available. Now, what else can I do? Well, genre, these are all actually from musicals. So I'm going to go to the genre column here, and rather than keep so that it doesn't change anything, I'm going to type musical. There we go, and it's appeared in the list, so I could choose it anyway. And again, hit save, and we can see that all of those files have now been changed to musical. What else shall we do? Well, again, let's go to year, because this is about the year that they've been used for me. So I'm going to change it to 2019, because that's when this production was. And again, hit save, and we can see that gradually all of these columns are brought in line. Now, there's some other things that desperately need fixing here. And one of them is that the title that appears when I open this in a player, like VLC or iTunes or Windows Media Player or any of those players, it's not the same as the name of the file. Now, that's really frustrating. So what I'm going to do is click on the track and then second click again, like we did in Windows. And I'm doing copy with Command or Control C, which is the same as right clicking and choosing copy. And I'm going to go over here and paste in there. And you can see it's the same. Now, I'm going to take out those numbers gradually because they're not in that version. There we go. And is there any others that don't have those? Not really. OK, let's... Now that I'm clicked on that track, I can just save the changes to that one track. So you can see I've taken a minute to go through and resolve all of these titles here so that they're the name of the actual song. That's something useful I can do. Let's see where else I can go. What I want to do now is sort out these file names, but rather than redoing them manually, I want to use the other information in all of the tags to help me with that. So I'm going to go up to convert here, and I'm going to use this one, tag equals file name, because file name is the thing that I want to change. And now what I'm going to do, if I look at this, it's going to first of all insert the artist, then the album, then the song number or track number, and then the title. Let me just hit OK, and you can see what's happened there. By using that automated path, it's actually completely changed that. And because I hadn't filled out some of the information properly, it's not really done what I wanted. So let me undo that. I've just done Control Z, which is the same as going to Edit and doing Undo, or going to the Undo tool just there. Now, let me select all of those again. This time, I'm going to go to Convert, Tag from File Name. And actually, all that I really want is I want the title. 
Now something else I might manually do here is type like that so that they all end with the phrase backing tracks. But I can be slightly cleverer than that. I can get it to choose this artist column instead. So let's do that. So rather than just putting that, let me paste the phrase I need, which is these percentage signs, artist, close percentage sign there as well. And let's hit OK. And then you can see here it's done exactly that. It's taken the title from this column and then after a hyphen, it's taken the title from the artist column as well. So now the track is renamed based on this data. And that's way better because it's much cleaner for me. That means in the files, I can see the title of the song and also what type of file it is. And then when I double click on it and run it in a player, I'll see the title, but I'll also see this artist information as a way to sort it. So getting to know these convert and action columns are really useful. And when you click on any of these, you have the option for help here that's going to bring up a web page with all sorts of useful information. Just a couple more things I want to go through, and that is how I can use some of these other metadata columns here. So let me select a couple of these tracks. I'm holding down Control. This would be Command on a Mac. And choosing the ones that I want to identify, what I'm going to do now is go into the comment box and give myself a little note for the future. Great version, use again. That's the sort of information that's worth looking at. When I have six files all with the same song name, that will be helpful. Let's do that. And then when we go down further into this information, we can see here it is. Let's track that through and find one of those songs. Good morning, Baltimore. So let's go and have a look at that. There it is. Let's right click on it and choose properties. And in here, when I go to details, there in the comments, great version, use again. So there's all sorts of things I can use that facility for. Something else that I've used that for is in the same way. Let's go back to comment. And this time what I'm going to choose is is here I'm gradually building up when I've used that track. That's really helpful as well to be able to see where I've used tracks before. So let me click on that now and let's go to one of those in Windows. And again into details and it lets me see where I've used that track previously. So why? Because I may want to know that in order to avoid using it or to make sure I use it. The trouble is at the moment in Windows, I don't seem to be able to find that comments box. When I right click, you can see it's none of the available options here. So what do I do about that? Well, I'll go down to more and here in this more dialog box, I get to choose what other details I might want. And there's comments there, which I can turn on. And now there's the comments that I made about each of those tracks. Again, I've still got a nice clean layout because I've got the title of the file and the title of the song and album information, as well as the other really useful things like length and file size. Remember, I can grab any of these and rename them with what's useful to me. But then over here, let's bring it down where we can see it. I've now got those comments about the tracks that are really useful to me when I'm deciding which ones I want to use again next time. MP3 tag does a wealth of other things as well. We can do all sorts of things such as choosing album artwork, setting disc numbers, setting composers and album artists as well if we want to. And up here with these two buttons, I can get MP3 tag to search the internet and see if it can find the track information for each of these files as well. That can be really useful too. But in terms of functional use as a music teacher, for me, being able to keep my file names and the track titles correct so that no matter what I view that file in, whether I'm on my PC, on my Mac, whether I'm on my phone or on my iPad, whatever it is, whatever app I'm using, the names appear the same and consistently. And I also have access to useful information like notes I've made about them and when they were last used and whether they were any good. Then that stuff is really functional and useful on a daily basis and definitely worth the minutes it takes to download this free app. Lastly, I've made quite a mess, so I'll want to tidy up. Let's grab all of those tracks. And over here in the comment box, I'm going to choose one of the other default options, blank. 
so that, and again, I can do this from some of the others that I don't need as well. I'm going to take out track information because it's not helpful unless I'm actually using it to order other things. Likewise, composer at the moment, I want to, to blank all of these. So now some of the columns that I'm not actually using, rather than having random information, let's save that. And now they end up completely clear. It's also worth noting that here in this album box, what would traditionally be placed where maybe I might put backing tracks, you can see I've put it there for artist, because of the way I want to organise the tracks that I use for working. So my personal music I wouldn't organise this way, but tracks that are useful for teaching and learning I would do. And what I'm going to do here at the moment is go into album and just change that to to backing tracks as well and save that just so that there's consistency. But what I would usually do is set that level as backing track and then the album level that's sort of the next level down of organization. I might then set it with some genre information or probably the show that each one of these is from or maybe even the genre, just depending for yourself how you might choose to organize this information. But if you treat artist and album in your professional files as a way to organise, then you see them a little bit differently to artist and album in the way that you'd organise your personal music. OK, so we're done. There was a really quick tour around the metadata or ID3 information for your audio files and how you can use some of those columns to help you organise the files that you use for teaching and learning compared to how you might just organise your normal music files yourself. We've also looked at MP3 tag, which remember is on Mac and Windows, free on Windows and a seven day trial and then purchase for Mac as a really useful utility to automate all sorts of processes that if you get a little bit nerdy about it and learn to use some of the finer controls can really help you keep those tracks organized. And I don't know about you, but as a music teacher, I seem to end up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tracks. And if you're not careful, you don't know where the duplicates are, where you've used them, which are the good versions. So hopefully that's really helped. Now, if you've got value from this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing as well so that you find my other content when it's published which is about weekly at the moment. Um, the links to everything we've used are in the description down below and I hope to see you again.